famously known as America's dad, wakes up today facing 30 years behind bars. I'm 42 years old. This story, if you think back to your youth, it's amazing that this is Bill Cosby. A jury found the 80-year-old guilty of three counts of aggravated indecent assault against Andrea Constant. The verdict has been deemed one of the first major victories of the Me Too movement. Joining me now, Midwin Charles, an attorney with Midwin Charles and Associates and Marvette Brito, a public relations expert and founder of the Brito Agency. Midwin, to you first, Cosby's attorneys say he's going to appeal. At 80 years old, is that going to be successful, or are we really just pushing off jail time? Well, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, as his attorneys, as you know, they are responsible for representing their client zealously, and of course they're going to say that they're going to appeal. He is 80 years old, and right now I don't know whether he'll get any jail time as a result of that. Um, but of course they're going to appeal. I definitely thought that there were some very interesting calls during the trial that right. I think give them grounds for appeal. Like, for example, allowing these witnesses to testify. As you know, in order for evidence to be admissible in trial, there has to be a probative value of that that evidence. It has to be relevant to the allegations in that trial. But also, there has to be a balancing test. That evidence cannot be overly prejudicial to the defendant. And so clearly, if you have four, five, or 60 women testifying that, uh, you know, Bill Cosby drugged them and assaulted them thereafter, that is very similar to the allegations in the criminal trial, then one would say that that is overly prejudicial. But yet the judge allowed those, uh, that testimony in and said that it showed, and on the basis that it showed a pattern. I think that that is a ground for appeal. I don't know how successful it will be, but that is a ground for appeal. Uh, I want to talk about pattern, Marvette, because it's not just that there were one or two women. There were dozens of women. It took their story, the news stories, pushing this for years for this to happen. Uh, so do you consider this a great victory for these women or the Me Too movement, or is it simply not enough? It's a great victory for the Me Too movement when you look at the previous trial and the fact that they were unsuccessful in convicting him. I believe the, the fertile environment of Me Too absolutely led to this outcome. And I think that for years, these women had to live with this pain, the pain of these allegations and the pain of of these actions and we're still living in this in this day where men are not really owning and taking accountability the way that they should. So I think that for him, this is really a sad day for him and it's a sad day because we still see a defiant Bill Cosby. We still don't see a remorseful Bill Cosby. Despite what he believes transpired, these women were hurt and we see him in court with his outbursts. We see him in court in a way that really is symbolic of what women have been dealing with for decades. That's an excellent point. And if you were advising Bill Cosby, if the goal as an 80 year old is to avoid jail time, is it really about how he's conducting himself right now? If he showed remorse, he is a public figure who for decades was iconic. If he stood up and spoke and was remorseful rather than practically go out of that courtroom swinging with his cane in the air and uh, cursing at the prosecutor, is that the wrong thing to do? Well, you're talking, about a, well it, you're talking about a man whose morals and values were a benchmark of aspiration yes. right. for, for decades. I mean, Everyone aspired Heath to be, absolutely. So for, <laughs> yeah, for no. us to see that behavior out of a man that, that is, is, is on trial, even if you go back and, and, and take some of that currency of what we believe you were, we need to see you be a bit more remorseful. We need to see you accountable, at least take ownership for the fact that you were a married man, and these were still inappropriate relationships, relationships. at best. Yeah. Yeah. At best. No, that's but, what's, but what's interesting is the contrast of the image that he portrayed, you know, America's dad, a dad who could be trusted and loved and admired With a and career revered. wife who was a but, doctor, but in, five fact, kids. but in fact, that became his undoing because he sort of stood on this sort of moral high ground and used to sort of chastise young African-American men for what they were wearing or for their behavior and took this moral high ground. And when the judge in 2015 decided to unseal the transcript of his deposition that he took under oath, 
oath in which he admitted that he drugged women, he gave them sedatives that he wanted to have sex with. That was the rationale for the judge. The judge said, listen here, the request to have it unsealed was filed by the Associated Press. And the judge said, you know what, we have this contrast where you have this sort of moral high ground, and yet you have these very significant, serious allegations. He believed it was in the public interest to release that transcript because of that dichotomy. So that became his undoing to a certain extent. That's why we're here today. Last point. I hope we see a different Bill Cosby at the sentencing. I hope that, that he arrives understanding that we really need to hear from him and we need to understand. I think that'll lead to healing, not only for him, and, but, but also for the victims. Unfortunately, I think we heard from him. He called the prosecutor a you-know-what. Ladies, thank you so much. Teachers.